What is our next main topic today, Ashley? Next up is from Jeff Singer. I'm sure you've heard by now about the news of a Tomb Raider sequel. This came as a big surprise to me considering the first film didn't make the 275 mil that deadline said it needed to break even and the fact that the film wasn't all that well received by critics, 52% or audiences, B, cinema score. So my question is, what are the chances this film actually gets made instead of being one of the many films that gets put into development but never gets the cameras rolling? I'll tell you what. I actually quite enjoyed this Tomb Raider movie. And and I said this, and this isn't saying much. It's not saying much at all, actually. I think it's the best video game adaptation movie that's ever been made. And and it's not even all that great. I mean, it's... But I thought Tomb Raider with Alicia Vikander was actually pretty okay. Uh, it, was it great? No. Did it have issues? Absolutely. But at the end of the day, I came out of, out of that movie feeling like I had a pretty damn good time. I had a pretty good time with this film. And anyway, when you compare it to the performance of, say, the previous Tomb Raiders with a much bigger star, Angelina Jolie, even critically, it did pretty good. Like the first Tomb Raider had a 20% uh, critic rating. The second one had a 25% critic rating. This one more than doubles that. Like actually the majority of critics at 52%, it's still not a great number, but it means the majority of critics actually like the film which you can't often say about video game adapted movies. Also, financially, I think it did kind of break even. Now look, at the end of the day, the movie cost 94 million to make, which means it needs to come in around 270, 280 to break even. Well, it made 274. So again, you're not in business to break even, you're in business to make money, but hey, you know, it's not so bad. It's actually a step in the right direction. Had a very modest opening weekend of 23, but then actually had some pretty decent legs. Got it all the way to two, almost $275 million worldwide. Are these the types of numbers, both critically and, say, financially, are these the types of numbers that would make you feel confident that you're going to get a sequel? <laughs> no. No, right. and, and I'll be honest with you. I am also, while I am pleased to hear that they're moving forward with this sequel, I'm pleased about it because I thought the first one was pretty okay, and I think there's potential to do it better moving forward. I will admit I'm surprised. I will admit I'm surprised because I remember saying after watching, you know, after seeing Tomb Raider and seeing the initial financial results, I said, man, I, I actually kind of like this movie, but it's never going to get a sequel. <laughs> I mean, look at look at the finances. But I guess somebody at the studio thought, you know what? We think enough people liked it that we think we can do better than breaking even moving forward. And at least it didn't lose them a ton of money. So I'm happy they're doing it. I'm surprised they're doing it. The chances that it actually gets made, I'll give it a 70% chance. I give it a 70% chance that at this point after hearing this news... 70% chance this movie actually happened. Rob, how are you feeling about this? Yeah, I, I kind of feel the same way you are. But again, like with these movies, we don't know how many digital downloads it, it, it got. I mean, Tomb Raider has been a favorite video game franchise for a long time. The first Tomb Raider movie, as you pointed out, made it had a 20% what Rotten Tomato score. Yeah. And, and it still made money to the point where they made, <clears throat> you know, a second one. So I think with... Video game movies like this, there there is more, there is a, a market out there, a secondary market that's larger than some franchise pictures might have. And clearly, if there's talk of it, uh, if they can keep the price down and 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 not spend two hundred million dollars, but spend more along the lines of what Shazam was doing, like I I think this idea of making these movies for one hundred fifty million dollars has become almost lazy as far as Hollywood is concerned. I think that they start, they need to start using more creativity when they make these movies and just rather than have whatever effects budget uh, that's unlimited, figure out ways to make these movies and rely more on physical effects and they can bring their costs down and still deliver satisfying content. And I, I think that there's this now this thought that, oh, this stuff just costs this amount of money. And I think if you have more and more creative producers coming in on these projects, they can make them for a price and not break the bank, in which case it makes sense to make another film because it doesn't have to cover so much expenditure uh, up front. All right. With that down, let's move on to the next topic. Ashley, what is the next one up today? 
I'm like, let the girl make another film. She gained 12 pounds of muscle for that film. She looked, um, first of all, not only did she look amazing, like physically, I remember they did videos to your point, Ashley, where she was doing like just her exercises to do it. And she was doing these chin-ups. She had muscles in her back that I didn't know existed. Yes, Like she got herself in incredible shape and she was, she, who cares about that? She was really good. I thought she was yeah. really good in the movie. I enjoyed it. I had a good time with it. I liked it too. I mean, it's not like I didn't go to the theater and see it, but I watched it at home and it was a nice little flick. And I thought she did a kick-ass job with the stunts and uh, she's a beautiful, wonderful actress. And so I enjoyed it. I'm glad there's a sequel coming out. I hope it actually happens. 